Today we are talking about arithmetical geometric series with some summations. So while you may think of a sequence as a list of numbers, which we call terms, a series is the sum of the terms. So if I have a sequence A1, A2, A3, A4, so on so forth, then the series Sn is just the sum of the first n terms of this sequence. And we will use two summations to, to uh, represent such a sum. One notation, or not two, not two summations, two notations. Right? The first notation is very easy. We just write out a1 plus a2 plus a3, so on and so forth, until we get to the last term that we want to include into the sum. The second summation, this one is called second notation, not summation, called summation notation. Well, what's with the gigantic E in the middle? What is it? The gigantic E. Okay, the e. Oh, no, no, no. So this notation is called summation notation, and it uses the Greek letter sigma, it's not an E, it's sigma, mm -hmm. right? And we read this as Sn equals sum, this is sum of Ai with i from 1 to n. So A, instead of Ai, we will put usually the explicit formula for the Ai. Um, for example, formula that re uh, relates the term number to the term, to the actual term. And on the bottom of the sigma, you put the index of the term from which you want to start summing up. And on the top of the sigma letter, you put n, which is the last term that you want to include into the sequence. So if I want to include, if I want to calculate the sum of the sum of the terms A2 plus A3 plus A4 of my sequence, what I would say is sum of AI with I from 2 to 4, right? So I start with A1, A2, include A2, A3, and my last one to include is A4. So these are the numbers on the bottom and on the top of your sigma. Uh, and we will practice so it will get easier. So the series that includes all the terms of the infinite sequence is called infinite and if you only want to include the finite number of terms of the sequence into the sum, we call this a finite series. Infinite series and finite series. Copying the previous lesson? Yeah, it's, it's very, very similar. Yes, the terminology is very similar to the terminology for sequence. Okay, so let's practice and hopefully it will get cleared. So the first type of question, using this sum, use the summation notation to write out the series, right? So summation notation means I have sigma letter, and when we say write out, it means that we have to have the pluses, a1 plus a2 plus a3, whatever, right? So you see sum of 3i with i from 1 to 5. So if i equals 1, then I have 3 times 1, right? 3i, this, this uh, formula is 3 times i. So from i equals 1, it's 3 times 1. Plus, if i equals 2, it's 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. And I stop mm -hmm. here because my last term to include in the sum is 5. I is from 1 to 5. Okay? So now I can actually simplify this. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. I'm writing out the series represented with summation notation. Questions? OK. 
Okay, let's try the next one. Number three right here. So again, the formula for the term is 3 to the power of i. If I start with i equals 1, what do I have? 3 to the power of 1 plus 3 to the power of 2. I'm changing i, right? From 1 all the way up to infinity. So 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the power of 4, and so on and so forth. And I never stop because on the top I have infinite, infinity symbol, right? So this is infinite series. So if I simplify this, it will be 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81 plus, don't forget those, 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 those. Questions? Okay. Number 2. Here we have some parentheses, right? Exciting. So I equals 1, I have negative 1 plus 6. Right? Plus some negative. My i is 2, so 2 plus 6. Plus negative 3 plus 6. So this is my i, right? This is my i. i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3. I'm not done. Plus negative 4 plus 6. Plus negative 5 plus 6 plus negative 6 plus 6. Agree? So I'm increasing i from 1 to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Otherwise, I'm just copying the formula. If I simplify this, what is it? Negative 7, and then plus minus, minus 8, minus 9, minus 10, minus 11, minus 12. So again, I wrote out the the summation notation. Questions? Good. Last one. Sum of negative one third times e to the power of i, i from one to four. So again, if my i is one, I have negative one over three times e to the power of one. Then plus negative to minus 1 over 3 times e to the power of 2 minus 1 over 3 times e to the power of 3 minus 1 over 3 times e to the power of 4. I stop because the fourth term is the last one that I want to include. Yes. Last year. No, I could have said plus negative, right? It's just in my head I simplified right away. Yeah, plus negative is just minus, right? So I'm writing out, start with i equals 1, right? Negative 1 over 3 times e to the power of 1. And then plus negative becomes minus, minus 1 over 3 times e to the power of 2. And I continue until i equals 4. So it's my brain. Oh, that's bad. Okay, so what if you go the other way around? If I have the sum here written out, I want to write the series in summation notation, right? I write the series in summation notation. So it means that what I'm looking for is the sigma. So first I need to figure out what this uh, sequence is. This the one that used for the series. Is it arithmetic? Is it geometric? Is it something else? It's so what I'm looking at is, uh, or I'm looking for is the formula for the term on the i place or n place. So what is this series? It's arithmetic because you're just adding four. It's arithmetic, right? My a1 is four, my b is four. Plus four plus four plus four. So if I want to write the uh, formula for the a i, what will I have? I'll have a1, 4, plus 4 times i minus 1. You see how I just replaced n with i? Doesn't matter what we use. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why you need to put it like that. Like what? Like 4 plus 4, then the parentheses i minus 1. I don't a1 care. plus a i equals a1 plus e times i minus 1. Right? Oh, 
right? So I'm just replacing a1 with 4, give it 4. Now I will simplify this. So I distribute 4 in, so I have 4i, four, 4 minus 4, so 0. So just 4i, correct? Ai equals 4i. Correct? So if i equals 1, I have 4. If i equals 2, I have 8. So on and so forth. So now I have the formula for the term a sub i. So sigma sum of 4i, i starting with what? 1. 1. 1, the first term, and ending where? Uh, um, 4. 4. 4. From 1 to 4. That's it. Right? So if I now use this summation notation and instead write it out, this is what exactly what I'll get. 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 6. This is kind of confusing. Let's go to the next one. 1 plus 4 plus 16 plus 64. So this is geometric or arithmetic? Geometric. geometric. This one is geometric. So my A1 is 1 and my R equals 4. So for arbitrary AI, right, the, the term on the i place in the sequence, what will be the formula? 1 times 4 to the power of i minus 1. Agree? Or I can simplify 4 to the power of i minus 1. Because uh, 1 times is not matter. Can you slow down for a second? Mm -hmm. I have to, like, write out this part first. So... When I want to write the sum in summation notation, I need sigma. The explicit formula for each of the terms will be 4 to the power of i minus 1. And now I need to figure out i from where to where. So where do I start? From the first. To and infinity. where do I end? Infinity. Infinity. Because in my sum here, I don't have the last term. It means that I go forever and ever. I goes to infinity. Infinity. Yes. Right, so we are thinking about number seven now. We see that it's not arithmetic because from one term to another it's plus three, plus five, plus seven. Not the same. Now, is it geometric? I don't think so because from one to four it's times four. From four times nine it's definitely not times four. Right? Not geometric, not arithmetic. But we still see the pattern, right? These are all perfect squares. So on any arbitrary, you know, this is place one, this is place two, this is place three, four, five, six, seven, right? First, second, third term. So on the place i, my a i will be what? i squared. i squared, right? So now I can rewrite this sum using my summation notation. So it's the sum of i squared starting from i equals 1 and ending with i equals what? 7. 7. So sum tells you include every single one of integers between 1 and 7. i equals 1? 1 to 7. Questions? For this series or for which series? Okay, this was for two series. Can we move on? Yes? It's a yes for me. Number eight. Some of the first ten terms of geometric sequence with A1 equals 2 and R equals 1 half. Right? So, some. Uh, what is my AR? What is the formula for AR if for the geometric sequence with the first term 2 and R equals 1 over 2? What is the formula? Ava, what would be the formula for AR if A1 equals 2 and R equals 1 half? It's a geometric sequence, so look for the formula in your formula sheet. Explicit rule. Uh -huh. To the power of 
Because I have I so for the I hands, I minus one. one. Very nice. Okay, so this is the explicit formula for my geometric sequence. Now I can use my sum, my sigma letters, sum of two times one over two to the power of i minus one. And now what terms do I include? I need to start with the first one, from the first one because sum of the first 10 terms. So I'll start with the first and I'll end where? And then it includes the oh, first five. 10 terms. So I include the 10 and then I stop. And sum of the first 10 terms. That's why from 1 to 10. 1 to 10. For arithmetic sequence, if you want to calculate the sum of the first n terms, arithmetic, arith arithmetic, series, arithmetic sequence, you can use one of these two formulas. That they are on your formula sheet. So you see where each of these formulas can be useful, right? If I know my A1 number of terms n and the last term, so I know the first term and the last term of the terms that I want to include in the sum and the number of terms, this is the formula to use, Cn, A1, An. If I don't know the last term An, I can use the second formula because it only depends on N, the first term, and D, okay. right? So depending on the information available to you, choose the formula that is more convenient. Okay, so let's try. Find the sum of the first terms, right? So first 30 terms, so my n will be 30, of the arithmetic series, right? Arithmetic series, and my a1 is 3, and that's it, right? I don't know my, la my a30, but I do know d. Can I figure out d? Plus 4. So n is 30, I want the sum of the first 30 terms. A1 is 3, and d, easy to see, is 4, because it's arithmetic. So the sum of the first 30 terms is S30, right? S30 equals, which formula is easier for us to use, the first one or the second? The second. So n over 2, so 30 divided by 2, parentheses, 2a1, so 2 times 3, uh, plus n minus 1 is what, 29, uh, 30 minus 1, times d is 4. Okay. I can do this. Step by step, simplifying, doing PEMDAS, GEMDAS, whatever, or enter the whole thing into calculator. Don't forget to put your fractions into parentheses, right? So if I evaluate it, to encourage you to try, I will get 1830. Just calculations. This is ugly expression. Just enter it into calculator and make sure that you get 1830. So let's write the next one. Find the sum of the first 25 terms of the arithmetic series 5 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17 and so on. Right, so what do I know? I know it's arithmetic sequence or arithmetic series, right? I know my A1 is what? 5. What is my D? Uh, 3. 3. And what is my N for my series? 25. 25. <laughs> so since I want the sum, it means that I want S25. Which formula easier for me to use? Second. Second one, right? Because I don't know the A25. 23. Okay, so 25 divided by 2, then forget parentheses if you're entering, entering it into calculator. So 2 times A1 plus 25 minus 1 times all ugly things, 25 divided by 2, and then 
Okay, for the sake of time, we'll skip the next couple and just cover in the next four minutes, I'll just cover the geometric formulas. That's it. And then hopefully you'll be able to. So for geometric series, we have two different formulas. The first formula is the sum of the first n terms. But the second formula is the sum of the infinite number of terms. So infinite formula, infinite geometric sequence, infinite series. Uh, the first formula is here, right? You, all you need to know that the series is geometric. You need a1, you need r, and number of terms to include. Very similar to arithmetic. Just be careful which formula you are using. But d and r should give you a good hint. The second one, this one, is only for geometric, right? Think about geometric form, uh, geometric series is the r that is very small, right? If your r, by absolute value of r is less than 1, for example, your r equals 1 over 2. If my a1 equals, let's say, 2, right? I start 2, 1, 1 half, 1 4, 1 8, 1 16, and so on. So for you see how each next term is smaller and smaller and smaller. At some point, they become very, very small. So if I add all this number together, the sum actually, we say, converge. Right, so the series is convergent in this um, in this case. So if I add infinite number of terms together, I'll still get one simple number. And that number can be found by using these particular formulas. A1 divided by 1 minus R. You see, N is not needed anymore because N is infinity, right? So all we care about is A1 and R. So we have, I don't know, a minute. We'll see if you can do this 13 and 15. So 13, find the sum of the first 12 terms, so n equals 12, of the geometric series written out here. So since I know this is geometric, my a1 is 1, my r is what? Come on, we are still working. My r is what? 4. 4. Okay. 